We're all seeing it, right? The weirdness. The world is getting stranger and stranger. Somebody's like, demons are not gonna... What? Demons exist! The good guys are bad and the bad guy is good. God does not want us wearing masks. This is over. No, uh-uh, no. Do you, why? Why? You let everybody else do it? You let everybody else do it? Why can't do it because I'm a blonde white woman? And people are coming up with more and more bizarre ways of explaining what's going on. Right now, the country is being torn apart by the biggest political hoax and coordinated mass media disinformation campaign in living history. What you're really participating in is a beta test for AI systems and facial recognition. Truth, justice, and Trump are fighting the fake news, corruption, and evil. Here's a glimpse of what's been happening lately. A video circulated on TikTok showing Justin Bieber seemingly signaling that there's an elite group of Hollywood pedophiles or something. This led to an explosion of posts by teenagers about a related conspiracy theory called Pizzagate, where it's claimed a group of Washington elites sexually abused children while communicating in codes about pizza. The clip that started this looks like an obvious scam. Here's the comment, and here's Bieber touching his hat as requested by the comment. But this is a simple trick. First issue, he's always touching his hat in this video. This hat is obviously not comfortable. Second issue, the comments aren't moving. It appears the person who recorded this clip saw Bieber touching his hat all the time, posted this comment, then scrolled back up to it and waited to get a hit. This clip is a terrible piece of evidence, but among teenagers who are way smarter than I was, this was enough to trigger an outbreak of interest in one of the most ridiculous conspiracy theories, which is saying something. Stop scrolling because this is like scary. An even more absurd theory about Wayfair also went viral recently, thanks to a community called QAnon, which has emerged as the dominant force in conspiracy culture. I'll get to what QAnon is in a bit. Guys, Wayfair is selling children. In this one, someone noticed that expensive cabinets being sold on Wayfair had people's names. And if you search for the names, you find missing children. You know, after you weed out all the non-missing children. So, you can buy a human in public on a popular e-commerce site for the price of a 2012 Honda Civic? 12 grand does not seem like enough money for this level of crime. And the evildoers kept the names of the children they'd abducted? I just don't know where to go with this. Turns out, almost all the missing children aren't missing. And some didn't much appreciate being involved. I'm not missing, and I'm not in no goddamn cabinet. They also brought scathing common sense to the matter. Let me go get a picture of you, bitch, and say you missing, and then put a little motherfucking cabinet next to it, and have everybody share that shit. Let's see how you feel. Fuck out of here. On the upside, this conspiracy theory did produce some quality jokes. And lastly, Chrissy Teigen was targeted and harassed by the QAnon community and accused of being a pedophile. It's always gotta be pedophiles. This happened because somebody went spelunking in Teigen's Twitter feed, looking to drum up a case for their predetermined conclusion. The evidence is just a bunch of obvious jokes or goofy statements. Chrissy Teigen is a woman, a person of color, and a liberal. Her being targeted is not coincidental. I'll return to this later. This episode with Chrissy Teigen was the latest in a long string of harassment campaigns by the QAnon community, and it probably led to a crackdown on QAnon by Twitter. These are just the latest viral lunacies. There's a huge assortment of nonsense widely circulating about COVID, about vaccines, about 5G, about pedophilia, pedophilia, pedophilia. Some of the videos on these topics have been seen tens of millions of times. These things aren't just goofy internet fads. The weirdness is breaching the levees and flooding the real world. There's a guy running for Congress who's into QAnon. He got a bunch of attention for claiming Beyonce is not black and is part of the Soros deep state and is a different person. This last one is based on a Twitter joke which also claimed Beyonce's daughter is Ariana Grande. Let's put it this way, if Mr. Nobody shows up at your doorstep, you got a problem. I am the boogeyman. Will this guy win? No. But he's not the only Q follower running for Congress. There are currently 69 of them and counting. Some of them have won primaries, and a few might get to Congress. Topping it all off, we've got a deeply eccentric US president who loves the weirdness and believes in a bunch of bizarre stuff himself. He tweets things like this and this and this, Lately, he's blaming the increase in COVID cases on too much testing. Many of those cases shouldn't even be cases. Cases are up because we have the best testing in the world and we have the most I, testing. I, I, no country has ever done what we've done in terms of testing. 
this guy will not be pulling us back from the precipice. He wants to hold hands and plunge into the abyss. And the weirdness isn't just American. It's on the rise in Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Ireland, the UK, Western Europe, and beyond. A lot of us are now wondering, is Western civilization losing it? Are we drifting into the arena of the unwell? In this video, we're going to take a deep dive into the weirdness. Trigger warning, there is some dark and disturbing stuff coming up, but if you stick with me, I think I can shed some light on what's happening, and I'm even going to try my hand at forging a path forward through the weirdness. If you find this topic interesting, you can get my documentary feature, This Is Not A Conspiracy Theory, for just five bucks. If I don't say so myself, this is the best documentary there is on conspiracy theories, and it also unveils the real unseen forces that shape our lives. Buy my stuff. Okay, what is happening? Short answer, all this is primal. You see, our minds are the same as these minds. Things might seem scary now, but you're not gonna get devoured alive by a cheetah. I think we could all express more gratitude for not being ripped apart by a wild animal. These people headed way worse. Our prehistoric ancestors had to survive in highly unpredictable and uncertain circumstances, and they had no clue why anything happened. And a peculiar thing happens when you subject the human mind to scary and unpredictable events it can't explain. It explains them anyway. The mind uses its built-in programming to come up with answers, and these answers make you feel better, and they give you the illusion of control. We conjure up imaginary forces and invisible entities that we can channel and influence. We conjure up magic. Before the sun sets on her 16th birthday. Magic only truly exists in one place, the human mind. None of this stuff is real, and none of it works. But it doesn't hurt us, mostly. And even more importantly, it eases our anxieties. Magical thinking happens when people are afraid or uncertain, and we use instinctive reasoning to make sense of it all. And the goal isn't the truth. It's to make us feel better so we can go chase that boar or have that boar chase us. As recently as the Middle Ages, magic was still a major force in Western culture. People believed in spells and incantations and warlocks and, unfortunately for a lot of women, witches. But for several centuries now, magic has been in retreat. There was a new kid on the block called Science, and Science could actually do many of the things that magic claimed to do, but pretty clearly couldn't. With Science, you could cure disease, you could predict the weather, you could move faster than a horse, you could fly through the air like a dove. But magical beliefs persist because magic comes pre-installed in the human mind. Children's fantasies are filled with magic, and so are ours. The Force is magical, Game of Thrones is magical, and all those superhero films that dominate the box office, they are magical. But magic isn't walled off in our fantasies, it seeps into reality. We see it in our superstitions. If you knock on wood, that's magical thinking. If you believe in luck or karma or destiny or the law of attraction, that's magical thinking. If you believe in astrology or you have a thing for crystals or you think you're gonna be reincarnated, those are magical thinking. And at the core of all religions is magical thinking. All gods are magical entities. Nonetheless, for a long time now, magic hasn't been a major force in public life. The mainstream was secular and rational, or at least fairly. But right now, magic is waging a comeback. It's waging a comeback because we are afraid and uncertain. And when people are afraid and uncertain, magical thinking kicks in. We see patterns that don't exist. We see connections that aren't there. We see hidden meanings in the meaningless. There are endless reasons to be scared right now. There's a blur of alarming events, custom tailored to your particular anxieties, speeding through the palm of your hand 24 seven. Pandemic, recession, upheaval, polarization, and looming back there in the shadows, climate change. Sleep tight, kids. Something is brewing in Western culture and we don't know what it is. Future generations might, but we, alas, don't. People are afraid, and when people are afraid and they don't have answers, magical beliefs fill the void. No, well, uh, don't, don't you get any foolish ideas that magic will solve all your problems, because it won't. 
We now have a major schism between two tribes. This idea is taken from J. Eric Oliver's book, Enchanted America. We have a large community of magical thinkers. These are people who follow their gut and rely on instinctive reasoning to make sense of things. And this group seems to be growing and gaining influence as social conditions degrade. And we have a group of evidence seekers who are still plenty irrational and magical, but they mostly defer to science and empiricism. All sorts of people think magically, but it now appears there are a lot more of these people among conservatives. Magical beliefs are clearly on the rise in the Republican Party. And of course, the president is a magical thinker and bases decisions on his gut, which is a more masculine way of saying he bases his decisions on his feelings. Why doesn't he show his birth certificate? I, I think he probably- he have to? Because I have to and everybody else has to, Whoopi. I think this divide between magical thinkers and evidence seekers is a major Major rift in society right now. We've got two tribes making sense of the world in different ways and perceiving different realities. These two communities do not understand one another, and I'm afraid the magical thinkers will never understand the evidence seekers. They're going to think we're lizard people. It's up to the evidence seekers to understand the magical thinkers and forge a way forward. You, dear viewer, are probably an evidence seeker, so it's up to you. I think this video will help you better understand what is happening and how so that we can start working on solutions. And to the magical thinkers who somehow stumbled in here by some twist of algorithmic fate, I'm sure you're already uncomfortable and I'm sure you're not going to believe any of this. Just try to hear me out and I wish you well. I truly do. So without further ado, what is this magical way of making sense of reality and how does it work? And ultimately, what can we do about it? What is seeing? You're looking, but what you're really doing is filtering, interpreting, searching for meaning. Magical thinking is emotional. It's not rational. It's about feelings. Although people who think this way often talk about skepticism and rationality and critical thinking. When you put all of those facts together and you use critical thinking, you realize this stuff is real. They don't actually do this shit. That's labor intensive and leads to a bunch of confusing, unsatisfying nuance and ambiguity. This is about quick, efficient decision making. Magical thinkers follow their gut, which again is a macho way of saying feelings. They feel fear, anxiety, apprehension, discomfort, something unpleasant, and unconsciously they summon up instinctive reasoning to make themselves feel better. And poof, magical thinking. This is not a selfish thing for me. This is a thing for me to try and free Americans so they can freely breathe. It's not healthy to breathe in your own CO2 all the time. There are lots of different ways to think magically, but I'm gonna focus on six that are common right now, particularly among people who believe in conspiracy theories, which are the dominant form of magical thinking. Symbols and codes. The symbols are a language that can help us understand our past. This cannot be overstated. Magical thinkers are really into symbols. I mean, they are really into symbols. One last time, they like symbols. The source of this is one of the most basic of all animal functions, not just people. Spotting patterns. There's patterns in everything and everyone. I see a pattern. This is a pattern. You are so good at finding patterns. Bees do it, dogs do it, all living things do it. In order to survive, to get what you want and avoid what you don't want, you gotta spot patterns. And it's important to remember this, that this is a pattern. Humans are extremely clever at spotting patterns even when they don't mean anything. Magical thinkers place an enormous amount of meaning on symbols. Often the only argument they present is that they saw symbols or what they thought were symbols. For instance, masks are often perceived in a symbolic way. And I will not be muzzled like a mad dog. They can be seen as virtue signaling, as an indicator of subservience, or just a sign that you're a smug liberal. Because when you put a mask on and go out in public, what does that say? QAnon, Pizzagate, and the Illuminati are three popular conspiracy theories of the last decade, and all of them are built on a foundation of symbols. The Illuminati crowd is really into eyes and triangles, which are absolutely everywhere. So anybody you want to be in the Illuminati, they're in. Who was most commonly accused of being Illuminati? Women, in particular divas. So these are the symbols of female strength and they're also overtly sexual. And the other major group was black people who have immense influence over pop culture, are a rising political power, and also are not white. 
Did anybody go looking for Illuminati symbols in the videos of Florida 